Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. You've heard this phrase, I'm sure, which is, we are all brothers and sisters and religion just divides us. Now, I think it should be stated quite clearly that no, we are not all brothers and sisters and even brothers and sisters fight and we don't have to have unity with all kinds of humans. No one does. Everybody has a way to divide. Everybody has a way to cling to those who support their values. We are not all brothers and sisters. We are not all one. We are all different. And I can have... I can treat you how you deserve to be treated. I can treat you with the basic respect dignity line. But you're not as dear to me as a brother or a sister. It reduces what those words actually mean. And I think a lot of liberals speak out of both sides of their mouth. And a lot of people who will say we're all brothers and sisters, at the same time will say religion divides us and religion puts, pits people against each other. But by them singling out religious people, they're proving that they're not even following what it is they're saying. If we're all brothers and sisters, then it doesn't matter if religious people divide themselves off from your group. You should still consider them brothers or sisters regardless of their actions. And if you start to change who you call brothers and sisters based on their actions, you're doing the exact same thing that religious people do. So you'll see a lot of new age people who have just different thoughts about where humans came from and such and they'll say, oh, religion divides us, it holds us down, it keeps us fighting and warring. We need to recognize that we're all one and it's like, no, not possible because each human has different temperaments and because you have a different temperament, you're going to have different ethics and different morals and those will clash with mine and I don't have to forget how you behave because I need to live up to some larger code that says we're all brothers and sisters. No, we have the right to freely associate and freely bond with whomever we like. And in order to judge, one must differentiate. You have to ascertain and measure someone for who they are, and then decide if they're worth the risk of, you know, getting to know. So, giving people the benefit of the doubt can help in some instances, but being skeptical of someone's intentions can save lives and prevent much crime and save you from massive forms of manipulation. So, every group decides how they would like to unify and whom they would unify with. And that therefore tells you that we can't all be brothers and sisters. The same people who play these word games are the same ones now who say men are women and women are men which confuses men and women even further. So they reduce and change words. Well, what, um, they say dog mom. They change what it means to be a mother. Oh, you're a mother to your houseplants. Yes, people have actually said that. You're a mother to your nephew. How is that possible? Your nephew didn't come from you. Oh, you're a... On Father's Day, women will call themselves the fathers because they're a single mom. And it's like, no, no, that's not how that works. You're not a man. You're not the father. You're not, you're, you're, no. So this changing of what it means to be a brother and a sister, what is what's led to the changing of our language and the changing of our language is what controls how we think. It, 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 puts our brains into a box of what's possible and the configurations of what we think and say. Because rhetoric and words is the way in which we express ourselves. It's the way in which we communicate. And it's interesting because if you look at Martin Heidegger, he had some really interesting points in his metaphysics and other such ideas. But words are important and they have a distinct meaning and they need to keep their meaning. And no, I'm not going to call every human on this planet my brother and sister. And everyone who sits at, I don't trust them automatically. 
Because now you're telling me you're naive or you're just a liar. You can't possibly believe we're all brothers and sisters. I'm a brother and a sister to who? No, 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 no. So they're trying to be peacemakers when they say that. I can't make peace with those who don't seek it. I can't make peace with those who commit evil acts. And so I'm not going to call someone who is evil my brother because that used to be a tone of endearment socially. And if brothers can murder each other, then why should I say we're all brothers and sisters? If sisters can sleep with each other's husbands, if sisters can do evil actions and betray each other, how many times have we seen sisters not get along? Brothers get along more, that's why it's sadder when they don't get along and they murder each other. Cain and Abel, Yusuf, Joseph and his brothers, so on and so forth. When sisters become envious of one another, you begin to see huge problems. When it comes to, like, say, Mary Tudor and her sister Elizabeth, for a time, because they had different mothers, some people argued there was a big rivalship. When laws of inheritance were made, sisters became rivals to one another. Women backstab each other all the time. Even in the show Pretty Women, it's, it was seen as a classic because of how the girls got along to some degree. But if you have four daughters pretending they're not going to fight or hurt each other, or one of them won't be wicked, it's just dishonest. So if you say we're all brothers and sisters and pretend that brothers don't murder each other, commit, what is that, fratricide? And that sisters don't do wicked things to each other, you're not even really accurately looking at the word. Sister is blood bond. Blood bond. You shared the same father, or you grew from the same womb. And the blood bond. I can't have a blood bond with every single stupid person on this planet. That's just not accurate. And you have to differentiate yourself. You can't welcome everyone around you. That's how you get preyed upon and you're being neglectful of your protective duties towards your children. You have to teach your children right from wrong. You have to teach your children about evil, about dark and light, about those who are master manipulators and so on and so forth. Manners can substitute this stupid idea that we're all brothers and sisters. No, it's just not true. People barely get along at work. You know, and they pretend that it's so noble to say everyone is, we're all brothers and sisters. And we just have to get along. You're just ignoring the empirical facts that some personalities are like oil and water. You just, you have to be patient. Islam tells us to be patient and have grace, have gracious patience. And when someone ignorant addresses us to really control how we respond, but that doesn't make them our brothers. So as Muslims, the believers, we call them sisters in faith, brothers in faith. But just like an adoptive son is not your actual son, so too your religious brother or religious sister is not treated the same as someone who came from the same mom or the same dad. We have a responsibility to each other because we share the same religion. And if you're not part of that religion, I owe you basic manners, which Islam tells me to have, but I have special manners with other Muslims. So merciful to the believers and harsh and stern with those who are not, but to represent ourselves well because we are a form of Dawah in and of ourselves. So when someone who is attacking religious people turns around and says, if we didn't have religion, we'd all be all peaceful, I'm sorry. Secular governments still have armies. Atheists still commit crimes. Even when you think of all these zombie movies, these zombie films, you can clearly see that groups rise up and want to take the resources of others. 
and that if you're trying to pretend you can all be kumbaya with every single person you meet, well, no, that's just not safe, that's just not smart, and just not possible. Prisons prove we're not all brothers and sisters. Some people are in there innocent, some people change, but mm, there's some people who are clearly wicked, and I need not call them clo close of kin. I don't need to treat them with reverence. And so, we have the right as human beings to associate how we want, and even animals are not all brothers and sisters to each other. Atheists will say, we're all animals, you know, we need to hump around like bonobos and, you know, itch our balls like chimpanzees, you know, and just be gorillas humping in the bushes, you know, we got to imitate the animals. Oh, do you really want to imitate the animals, huh? What about a tiger who's defending its territory or, you know, a grizzly bear that takes out a female's cub so he can breed with her so she can come into heat sooner? Does that grizzly bear think that all oh, bears are one? No. It doesn't. Hmm, what about male lions who get kicked out of the pride eventually? Hmm. What about ant colonies and how they go to war? Orcas when they attack a great white shark and eat its liver. Well, not all one. No. There's the in-group and the out-group. And, if it's survival of the fittest, and whoever spreads their genes and adapts to the environment, you literally cannot have a we are all brothers and sisters creed. That just wouldn't work. Because women don't breed with every person as if they're all, oh, we're all special, so I don't need to have any sort of hierarchy. And hierarchy proves that, you know, some are better than others, and those who are better should lead, and those who are inferior, they have basic standards of how you treat them but you tend to treat those who are better better because they've earned it and those who are less you treat them less because they've earned it and so you can't put everyone on this special classical ideal of brothers and sisters that you embrace and fully trust and want to manage and spend time with you only have so much time on this planet if you walk in this planet that's violent and deadly and filled with wickedness, thinking everyone's your brothers and sisters, this is just as stupid as a baby deer or deer-like creature that goes and prances around a jaguar that slowly paws at it and licks it and eventually bites his throat and carries it up the tree. You just, this is stupidity. And atheists don't live by that idea at all. They don't. If Darwin was right, according to them, where it shows how you adapt and... They'll say, oh, well, we're not social Darwinists, but you're telling us in nature. And you're telling us that the ancestors who lived before, only the healthiest, those who could hunt the best, those who were fertile, and such bred and created better and better genes as they went along and that the mindsets and personality traits were selected for well clearly the people of the past didn't think everyone was all brothers and sisters because they literally had to eliminate the other tribes they had to eliminate the other groups and in order to secure resources they couldn't think of everyone as all brothers and sisters that's why there's charity that's why there's the free will to give to someone you think who's earned it. No matter what you do, people will find a way to divide each other. And some people should be divided off. To pretend that everyone has to be in this four circle. Okay, get a scoop up some random people, right? Do an experiment, put them in a closed room together. You'll see that immediately Factions are forming, you know, so-and-so doesn't like so-and-so, all these complex relations, and before you know it, there's a fight. Prisons. You put all these people in there together, they just start stabbing each other and R-wording each other. Oh, you say, oh, well, it's just that they don't have the, they just don't have the mindset that we're all brothers and sisters. 
if soldiers are in an army and they're at one unit fighting for the same cause and they still fight, hello, that shows you right there humans will always find something to fight about. If I put two male guinea pigs in a cage and they both have food and water plenty, they still will fight. Two male hamsters, they'll still fight. I've done this when I, my dad had his Conic Corso Italian Mastiff and his Rottweiler. They both have food and water. You put their food bowls close, one finishes before the other. He walks over to the other's bowl, tries to eat, and the other has to fight him off, and then they start actually fighting each other. Even though he's already eaten, his personality wants to take the other dog's stuff. So, do those dogs, you know, do they even look at everyone as brothers and sisters? No. But then they'll say, oh, but, 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 but us humans, we're special. But you said we're animals. You said we're animals, and there's nothing special about a human soul, according to the atheists. You're just going to be worm food, you know, wondering where your soul was before it came, what consciousness is. No, it's nothing special to the atheist. There's no spirituality to them. It's anti-theist. But then they'll all of a sudden... Then they'll be like, oh no, we're special and we're meant to be this or that or travel the galaxy. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. And religions don't pretend we're all brothers and sisters because even the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna went to war, and the Bible there's wars. The pagans, even the Druids, every group, tribes, there's war. Sorry. There just is. And even if you go to the Greek pantheon, they're, look at the way the gods, their gods treated each other. I mean, Hera, she cursed Hercules because, you know, Zeus cheated on her. Like, Hercules is totally innocent. And, <laughs> you know, he gets the 12 horrible labors. It's just, it's just insane. The way Zeus behaved, it's sick. And then if you look at even certain folktales, it's, there's Loki who's like this trickster guy <laughs> you know, what are you talking about it just denies how humans really are and you can be like that guy Morgan in The Walking Dead who you know he's like I can't kill anymore and he does some weird Akita and he's like Ugh, yeah, I can't kill anymore and then Carol freaks out and is like I can't kill anymore and it's either kill or be killed in such situations like that. And you can have discernment on who, when, and why. But you literally cannot look at everyone as brothers and sisters. And that's what's interesting is that Rick, that character in the beginning, he starts off being all kumbaya, we can always work it out. Then his own partner Shane tries to murder him. And he slowly starts to wake up and realize that, no, there's them and there's us. And that's literally needed for survival. That's something that's really unique about The Walking Dead. And no matter which way you look at it, for the preservation of a society, you have borders, you have rules, codes of ethics that everyone sticks to. And the clash of civilization comes when they're them and they're you. And sure, maybe slowly you can build this sort of middle ground of mixing, but to pretend that every ideology will get along is absurd and if you force everyone to have the same ideology people will still find something to go to war with if you look in Rick and Morty there was an episode where the pointy nipple people fought the non pointy nipple people <laughs> and it was like what is going on you know like that's just a clever episode just showing you that people will differentiate people will punch each other in the face Philadelphia Eagles fans, Raiders fans, they'll be like, oh, Dallas Cowgirls, uh, Denver Donkeys, uh, and the next thing you know, they're drinking alcohol and punching each other. And you could say, oh, Milan, well, of course, we don't want that, but I'm telling you that it's impossible to do that. In paradise, such an existence will be there, but that's where you truly will be one because you all accepted to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going into a place that was earned. You're having a certain quality of people. And you accept the same thing. If none of you accept the same thing, it's not going to work. Think about how when, even in Game of Thrones, the Hound, 
there's a guy who works for the seven the, the septa, seven septons or they call him this this what was it was the high sparrows religion i forget he saves the hound nurses him the 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 firehood the, the fire religion of uh of Melisandre, they these two rider guys show up and take out everyone because they're weak and have no weapons and hang that priest from the some type of constructed building. They were, they were trying to build a church, the Seven Septons or whatever that religion is called. They hang him, and the Hound. He he has this spiritual thing of a guy who no longer wants to fight and murder, and he left that life behind and. You know, and everything, but he still gets hung up by those of a different faith, you know, while the hound was out chopping wood. And so, even in cinema, you will see how that just doesn't, just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. So no matter which way you square it in the animal kingdom, in the path mythos, in folk tales, today, sports teams, humans are always going to differentiate. And you literally have to to survive. You have to. And so no, we're not all brothers and sisters. We're the same human species and we'll do our best to get along, but certain behaviors will make you be the other. And that's where morals and ethics come in. And so religion, it's a code of moral and ethics. Naturally, not everyone's ethics are gonna get along. If I say, you know what? Charity is important. And you say, mm, it's okay to be a miser. I earned it. It's my capital. Eh, screw you. I'll watch you starve. Obviously, we're not going to get along. Obviously. And I'm going to treat you based on your ethics codes. So, be mindful. In my opinion, let me know what you think. When someone ever says we're all brothers and sisters, you're like, I bet you have a long list of people you hate secretly in your head. And is that person accepting to everyone? Has no enemies? Has, has no one he dislikes? Has no one he doesn't associate with? Because if you don't associate with that person, you've just proved they're not your brother. And even with your brother, you have... A limit love is conditional you have to meet certain conditions okay the only time love isn't conditional is when the baby is small and they're a little taut and they're like ah to the sixth grade so when they hit to be like 11 12 I'd argue because then they start to hit puberty and now that they're coming their own person but an innocent little baby they're just pure love, pure joy. So that's different. But love is conditional. There's conditions that have to be met and kept and maintained. There's a standard, there's a threshold. Break that? Well, now we have to reduce how much energy I put into the interaction and relationship. Not necessarily, because we're not supposed to cut off ties of kin and kinship. But we are supposed to maintain a certain boundary point humans have to have boundaries therefore not everyone can be your brother and sister doesn't make sense let me know what you think i'd be very curious to see what you have to say and i just really thought about this today so let me know if you'd like to join my blog and read about other things that i write you can go to www.subscribestar.com slash Milhon Archive. Hope to see you there.